The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year's Eve, 9.06 a.m., December 31st. We got markets right now kicking off the final trading day of 2021 with pretty calm action. All things considered, putting sitting relatively near all-time highs on the S&P and on the Dow. A little bit of negative action yesterday, but, man, you're talking about as close as you can get to 4,800 on the S&P futures, 4,799.75 at about 10.15 a.m. yesterday morning. From there, though, a little bit of a sell-off. You're talking about almost 50 points. I mean, check out the sell-off we had at 7 o'clock last night as well. Futures trade down to 47.50. Since then, we've come almost back to where we were at the close, but a little bit of a sell-off in the final hour of trading from about 47.92 uh, from the dad, time my dad was on the show from about 3 till 4 last night. You traded down a solid almost 20 to 30 points from above 47.90. You end the session at a price point of 47.72. You were as low as 47.67 and right now we're trading at 47.68. <clears throat> NASDAQ 100 trading 16,433. You got the Dow negative by 44 points. We hit a record high yesterday of 36,572. The Russell, how about some volatility in the Russell, man? You, you give it and you take it. The Russell trades up to 2270. And just like that, it closes right back to where you were yesterday. And overnight, you accelerate higher, uh, excuse me, you accelerate lower with the other markets at about 7 p.m. Uh, and then we get a pop. We're up to 2244 basically unchanged from yesterday's close commodities currencies bitcoin a little bit of a pop overnight bitcoin back at 48000 you have crude trading down a dollar at 75.96 gold continuing to pop check out the acceleration on gold from wednesday 1789 we just hit 1828 we put gold on a daily uh, next stop, potentially, I mean, we're coming, bumping up right against this area that we've been at, that we've had a little bit of resistance, whether it was back in July, late July, that area in early September as well. Uh, the recent highs, when you go back to just last month in November, you're talking about a high of 1879. Gold's up 13 bucks at 1827, and we jumped to notes and bonds. Pretty tame action on a daily basis. Just chopping around near these lower price levels right now. You're up three ticks on the session at 130.16 on the 10 year. And uh, where do we kick it off? Let's kick it off with notes and bonds. Uh, where are we? Here we are. BlackRock and Vanguard braced for a fresh year of Treasury losses. So 2021, first year since 2013 that the U.S. Treasury Index, Bloomberg's U.S. Treasury Index, returned a minus 2.5% for the year. First yearly slump since 2013 in records stretching back to 1974. It's never fallen for two years in a row. Never. Well... We've broken just about every other record out there, folks. Uh, why not break that one? And you look at the move that we've had. Now, you back this up. Even how far can the 10-year go back? Um, yeah, there's this far back. Now, what I'm trying to find is since 2013, right? Yearly slump since 2013. Yeah, and there is 2013s when you had quite the pullback there. Indeed, you pull back from a price level of about 131.27 to close out the year at 123.15 on the 10-year. Now, of course, it stretches uh, Treasury Index. I'm not sure if that's just, just going to be the 10-year, but nonetheless, there you see it on that chart. Um, but closing out the year at minus 2.5%. And we'll see what happens. Yields are supposed to rise, right? If yields are rising, price is going to decrease on the treasuries. And yeah, it may be another tough year, as they put it here. The Bloomberg Treasury Index set for its first annual climb since 2013. Benchmark has never suffered back-to-back -back losses, uh, and we kick off 2022 uh, next year. A repeat of 2021 is a reasonable expectation for Treasury market returns in 2022. How about a reasonable expectation for returns of minus 2.5%? I don't like that reasonable expectation for returns. Uh, if inflation eases slowly from where it has, is at at the moment, there's a risk of more downside performance in Treasury. Treasuries next year. 
And that's going to create a headwind for the popular 60-40 strategy. I've talked about it before. It seems like, folks, that if you're looking for a 60-40 strategy, you might be. And I'm not a analyst uh, portfolio diversification expert, okay? There's a lot that goes into it in terms of being diversified, um, talking about how stocks uh, trade together, whether they trade, you know, opposite each other to have some diversification. That's the point of a 60-40 portfolio. But when you're talking about an expectation of maybe negative 2.5% performance for 40% of your portfolio in a year where equities were up 28%, Right. What I would encourage you to think about. And, you know, many of the dividend stocks did not perform that well this year as well. Let's just put Verizon on like a three year weekly. OK, Verizon trades down right from 58 to 22. Strong company with a strong dividend. They trade lower as well. AT&T had its own trip going on, uh, but trades from 28 to 24. Uh, some other strong dividend companies. You got Walmart. Looks like they're going to close out the year barely in the red from 144 to 143. Uh, McDonald's comes to mind. We have Walmart and McDonald's in my newsletter. Folks, this has been a strong one for a dividend stock. Starts the year off at 214. You're trading at 267. You're talking about record highs for McDonald's. Uh, point being, maybe you find some strong dividend stocks to fill out at least a portion of that portfolio. Maybe it looks something like 60% equities, 15 to 20% bonds, and 20% uh, dividend stocks or something like that because we're living in a pretty exceptional time where the Fed is telling us three rate hikes next year, three rate hikes the following year. That's almost a best case scenario, folks. There is a scenario that if growth slows down and inflation is not as abundant, that potentially the Fed could pause that, but I don't think that's happening, folks. I don't think that... Uh, Growth is going to stop, and I don't think that inflation is going to pause to the point to allow the Fed to slow down on possible rate hikes coming down the line. The influences of inflationary tendencies are pretty strong right now, and I don't see them subsiding in the next three months, six months. And that's how fast they would have to start turning around to avoid the rate hikes coming down the line. Uh, with that in mind, rate hikes coming down the line, you're going to have rising yields. Rising yields should point Two, I mean, look at look at this look at this chart in this thirty year, right? Higher prices across the board, folks. We've had quite a pullback as you pull things back from where we were in twenty twenty. Um, but yeah, just be careful of that one. Something to think about if you do have that retirement portfolio, because in the rate environment that we're in, forty percent of your investments uh, sitting in bonds might be a little tough when you're reading expectations that you might have the first negative years back to back that we've ever seen. Very reasonable to expect that that may happen uh, as we come into the next year. All right, let's jump around as we look at uh, another cancellation of flights. Man, talk about uh, a perfect storm of headwinds over there. You have Omicron, people being out sick, weighing on the staff of these airlines, having to cause flight cancellations. Then you have the weather going on in some of the parts of the country, causing storms, causing cancellations by themselves. Carriers worldwide have pared back January schedules by almost 10%. That is quite a number when you think about how many people are flying right now, folks. 10% uh, are cancellations. 1,125 flights scrubbed. Winter storms threatening to further disrupt travel over New Year's weekend. It's been a tough one for people traveling during the holidays, I imagine. All right, folks, stay tuned. It's 9.15. We got 15 minutes to go until the opening bell of the final trading day of 2021. I'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. We have all the markets barely in the red right now, kicking off the final trading day of 2021. Quite a trading year, folks. You wrap it up. I think we're talking about 70 or 71 record highs. There's only about 220 trading days throughout the entire year. So you're talking about one out of every three trading days, right? So almost two trading days a week you're talking about. Okay, we're dealing with record territories all year long, folks. Yeah, we've had a couple of pullbacks. But talk about a resilient market. We almost hit 4,800 on the S&Ps. It's almost tough to remember that we kicked off. Let's just put it back on a three-year weekly to get the full move that we've had during COVID. We kicked off the year, folks, at 3,600. 3,600 seems so long ago. Uh, it really does in terms of the price levels that we're now used to in the S&Ps. You take a look at the Dow, right? You're talking about barely at 30,000 in the Dow. In terms of where we are, we're trading 36,000 in the Dow right now. And NASDAQ 100, quite a year for those FANG stocks. You're talking about 12,000. So much for 12,000. How about 16,000? As the NASDAQ 100 gains about 3,700. 3,700 points. Is that right? Yes, it is. 3,700 points and change throughout the calendar year. Uh, what is that? That's going to be more than a 30% pop in the NASDAQ 100. Helped by the likes of, we'll start it off with one of the best performance stocks, especially Especially when you look at market capitalization of the year, Google runs from 1750 to the ballpark of 3,000. You're talking about a 60 to 70 percent move for Google shares. Apple shares, strong year, but not quite the year that Google put up. Not many put up the year that Google did. I mean, Apple starts the year at 133. You're finishing at year 180. Not bad for a company with 16.4 billion shares outstanding, I believe, is the count for their share count. Microsoft, quite a year as well. Microsoft accelerates from 220 up to 339. Man, they add, what is that, 120 bucks? Yeah, Microsoft, really, really strong year, right behind the likes of Google. You're talking about, uh, what is that? They trade up almost 120 bucks. Yeah, you're talking about a 55% move, 60% move, something like that for Microsoft shares. Amazon, a little bit of a laggard, consolidating. They're going to finish higher, but barely by about 170 bucks. So what are you talking about? Maybe a 5 to 6% move to the upside for Amazon. They got a new CEO taking over in the middle of the year, Andy Jazzy, as he looks to take over his first full year in 2022. 
We jump to Facebook shares. They've caught a lot of heat this year. But, boy, you look at the performance they had from the start of the year. Still strong numbers. Facebook's going to beat the market. They'll be up. What is that? They start the year at about 267. You're up uh, almost 80 bucks. So you're talking about 30 to 33 percent maybe on that equity for the year for Facebook shares. I've been talking a lot about them. I got Oculus 2, uh, Oculus Quest 2 for the holidays, VR experience. It is pretty cool, folks. I encourage you. If you haven't tried it, you're looking for a fun holiday gift. You're looking for a fun birthday gift. You got kids in the house of uh, you know teenagers or anything like that it is a pretty cool experience and it's actually not that bad when you think about 400 bucks considering what a console costs these days uh, 400 bucks not that bad when you don't even need a TV. When I first buy, open the box, you know, your brain goes to the point of, okay, I got to hook it up to the TV, right? We'll get this thing set up. We'll give it a go. No, you don't because the TV is in the headset. Now, it's, it's really remarkable that I got this thing last weekend, which was Christmas, okay? I started talking about it because it was just a cool experience to share the experience with you and let you know that I really do think eventually down the road, five or 10 years, at least, um, not at least, but as in it's coming in the near future, in at least the next five or 10 years, this is going to change the way things get done across the board. There's no reason why education-wise kids aren't wearing these headsets. You're going to be able to explore the world. You're going to be able to hold classrooms, sitting in the Colosseum in Rome, right? Imagine you're in a world history class in your class and you, you're all sitting in the Colosseum in Rome, right? You're going to travel to Venice. You're talking about Italy's history. You're over there in Venice. You're in um, wherever you are. You're in the Great Wall of China. It's a pretty surreal experience. Now, every week, though, every day, there's been articles about it. I was already going to talk about it. Then it comes out that they sold a lot of headsets because they could track the app, app store and Oculus downloaded a lot of apps, right? Then it came out that Apple's hiring away a bunch of workers um, while trying to keep them by pushing out $180,000 bonuses. Point being, folks, we might be at a tipping point here that I find out about it. I'm telling you about it. More people got it the holidays. They're telling people about it. Maybe it just reaches that tipping point. If you haven't checked out the book, folks, Malcolm Gladwell, he has the book, literally Tipping Point. It's actually an amazing book. And it talks about uh, how trends reach a point, right? That they have enough people that they're multiplying, um, that they're exponentially expanding and you reach a tipping point and that's it. You got enough momentum. And before you know it, it's... Uh, it's it's caught steam on the internet, right? Or it's a trend that's taken over. You might be a tipping point around right now with the amount of headlines, articles that I'm seeing and in my own personal experience, per, per, you know, getting a headset for Christmas, like many others. Now they're talking about, bought your kid a VR headset for Christmas, you might end up regretting it. That's quite a negative take in my opinion. They're talking about parental controls in here is all they're talking about. Uh, it's, it's very easy to hate on a company like Facebook right now and it pains me greatly to be out there pumping the technology that they are behind because I don't trust that company for a moment, folks, with my data, but the technology is pretty cool. Apple's gonna be coming down the line with a set of their own sometime probably next year or maybe early in 2023 are the estimates right now. That headset looks to be almost $6,000 of the first estimates. They're just going to go super high end. Boy, if I'm out here raving about a $400 headset, folks, what is a $6,000 headset going to cost? Now, Facebook's Oculus 2 can currently view their max viewing capability uh, is 360 degrees at 8K. Okay, which is pretty surreal, folks. Those are the videos I'm talking about where I pulled up YouTube VR and I could see everything that I was encompassed in for, for wherever you decide to be. Those videos that are the most amazing right now are at 360 degrees at something like 8K. Now, to give you a glimpse of what these cameras look like that are filming this because I had to pull it up. All right, here's an idea of what, it would make sense. These are the super high-end ones, okay? I'm talking about whether it's, uh, there's the Kandao Obsidian Pro. This looks to be one of the top-end professional 360-degree cinematic VR cameras, okay, with 12K. This can do 12K, I believe. 3D, 16 terabyte SSD. All right, one of the other ones on the market that's a great one as well as this one I was finding out, the Insta360 11K cinematic VR. That'll set you back just $15,000. Now, the cool part about this is, is that you can see how they work. They're basically just a lot of cameras looking in every direction, all right, super high-end cameras, and then what they do is they have the technology to stitch together all of those different camera angles to form the 360-degree viewing experience you have in 
your helmet going on. Now, what's pretty cool though is, point being, they got cameras that go up to 12K. The best piece on the market right now is probably the Oculus 2 that can only see 8K. Point being, it is shifting dramatically, folks, even in the future, as in when Apple's headset comes out, it's supposed to have better specs than Oculus 2. I just told you that Oculus 2 can view 8K. Well, now I've showed you that there's cameras out there that are already recording in 12K. All right, so Apple and then Facebook is has a Cambria project, which is going to come out with a more expensive upper tier level headset versus the Oculus. So they'll have an upper end one as well. Pretty remarkable to see where this technology goes. Now, here's the cool part I found out about this that I'll finish it off with. And let me just find one. Is that these 360 degree cameras, if you don't need to be in 8K, which you probably don't, um, something as simple as a GoPro Max 360, 500 bucks, and you got basically they do it with two cameras on each side. I'll talk about it a little bit more because I didn't even realize the technology was that far, friend. 500 bucks for a 360 degree camera. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back for the market open right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open for the final trading day of 2021. We got the S&Ps negative by five points to kick things off. NASDAQ negative by 10, the Dow negative by 22, and the Russell sneaking into the positive here. So to finish up this conversation, because just the idea of the technology, um, pretty cool in terms of the cameras that are available on the lower end. If you do want a 360 degree camera, just by Googling it, Samsung Gear 360 4K, 4K for 130 bucks. I'm not the BHP photo. I'm not even, this says 2017. Uh, three and a half stars looks to be, but you're talking about a 3K camera. Now you up it a little bit. We got one here for a 4K video camera, uh, the Ricoh Theta, not familiar again, looks to be uh, an Amazon choice, four and a half stars, only 300 bucks. And you see that basically what's going on is they're basically two cameras, okay, of a wide angle lens on, on either side, allowing it to capture 360 degrees. Uh, you go a little bit higher than that, this is the Insta360 X2. I believe this one goes to 7K. I was just reading somewhere. Where does this go? Let's see. Yeah, 5.7K. 5.7K, and you're talking about only uh, 500 bucks there, and that's the one I was talking about. I think, where's my GoPro up here? Didn't I have a GoPro up here? Where are we at? There it is, the GoPro. Uh, 500 bucks as well, and I believe, what's this do? Does this do 8K? Yes, he's, it's got... Five, I, I, I'm not, I'm still digesting how to view what a, a 360 degree view in 4992 by 2496 correlates to, whether that is 8K or 6K. Uh, here we go. Spherical 5K video. I mean, just pretty amazing, folks. I was saying to my dad, uh, you're going to see the world change on this type of photography because right away I said if you're a, if you're in the photography business folks you're gonna have to get one of these cool 3k TVs uh, cameras because imagine any type of huge function a wedding right weddings in particular where you're hiring photographers people are gonna start filming their weddings in these 360 cameras because one of the coolest parts also is that you literally just set this thing up in the middle of the room almost all right Let's see if they have anyone that are just to show it recording. I mean, literally, you set it up in the middle of the room on a nice pole like that, and then it's recording everything from the middle of the room's perspective. And then what it allows you to do is you can literally, basically, you're saving a moment in past history that you can walk through in the future by putting a headset on. Uh, 10 years into the future, 15 years into the future, you slip into your VR headset and you walk back through your wedding of 15 years ago or something like that. The stuff of science fiction is here, folks, and that's the camera, and all you got to do is record it, and you put on the headset, and you're walking through your wedding. Everybody's walking around you. You're almost reliving that moment in 3D virtual reality. So that is going to change things dramatically, and when you think about the amount of money that can be charged, now that's the top, top, top end, right? 12K, I just told you, there's not even headsets on the market that can view 12K yet, okay? You go to something... Uh, that's 11K. Really, all you need, as I said, is 8K. And uh, was the Insta... Where's my Insta? I've been jumping around. Yeah, either way. that uh, Yes, uh, yes, the Insta 360. That's still 11K. Point being, you spend 5, 10K. You can probably get an 8K 360 camera. And meanwhile, you're going to have photographers. You can charge super high end. Imagine what you could charge. Uh, filming a beautiful wedding and allowing somebody to walk through it in a VR experience. Not many are doing those right now, folks, and it's going to change the world, I'm telling you. It's coming. Uh, Facebook shares. So as I mentioned, we'll finish up with that. Down four-tenths percent as all the markets popping on the open. Why not, folks? Let's get records across the board as we come into a banner year uh, ending of 2021. You get the S&Ps up one point, NASDAQ 100 up 15. Let's jump around to some of the FAG stocks and see how they're opening. A little bit of volatility on Apple shares, finishing the year it looks to be just under $3 trillion. We jump over to Google, one of the top performing FAG stocks out there for sure. Google up one-tenth percent. Let's jump over to Netflix shares. Netflix quite a year. We finished the year above 600, putting it back on a three-year weekly, quite the consolidation. Netflix, I mean, quite the run Netflix had, but man, it's been a tough year when you got to beat the index that's up 27%. Even Netflix, you're going to finish the year about almost $100. Let's see, where did we close out 2020? Technically, you closed out 2020 at 540. So you got Netflix shares about up 15% for the year at 612, pulling back from that recent high of 700. We jump over to Microsoft shares on the open, down about four tenths percent, strong year for Microsoft across the board. We jump over to some of the chip stocks, AMD. 
getting a pop of the open. Why not? Quite a year for them. They're up 1.8% right now. We jump over to Intel shares, up 6 tenths percent right now. And I think AMD, let's see, we have some stocks with some headlines out here. Did AMD? Yeah. Uh, so part of the reason AMD said it now expects to complete the $35 billion all-stock takeover deal for Xilinx during the first quarter of 2022, delayed from its prior 2021 year-end target. Companies said they will not they have not yet received all the needed approvals. So Xilinx is down in the pre-market. You got AMD popping a bit. Other companies with news on the final trading day of 2021, Exxon uh, signaled that it will report a fourth consecutive quarterly profit, thanks in large part to stronger oil and gas prices. Better believe that those gas companies can better be making money right now with oil, what it's been doing. A snapshot of the fourth quarter results came in an SEC filing ahead of the official earnings coming down the line in about a month, XOM. There's a nice pop up, eight tenths percent for you on the open. We take a look at a three year weekly for some context. Strong year for the oil stocks, man. You're seeing Exxon up about 50, 50, five zero percent from 40 bucks to start the year. We're finishing it at about 61. Let's jump around to some of the banks. Interesting to see how they're going to trade in the coming year of 2022. Big year for the banks in 2021. You trade from JP Morgan, 126 to 160. So you're talking about adding, what is that, 34 bucks, almost a 30% gain for a company like JP Morgan for the year. Now, yes, the S&P put up 27%. But if you started the year and you told me what was the risk in being in a company like JP Morgan versus being in a company in some other companies, when you're getting a nice dividend, you're in, a, you're in a bank with rates where they were coming into the year. I would say that the risk in a company like that is lower relative than, especially the some of the growth stocks, et cetera. Uh, meanwhile, JP Morgan posts almost 30% for the year. We jump around to Bank of America, even bigger numbers. Bank of America puts up almost 50% this year. You start at 30 bucks, you end at a pretty even number of almost 45. Uh, strong performance for Bank of America. We jump to Goldman Sachs, Goldman, Trades are about 256 to 386, so you're up almost 50% as well for Goldman. Uh, Morgan Stanley, you trade from 70 to 100, so you add 30 bucks. Was that 40% for Morgan Stanley? Strong, strong numbers for these banks. After a big year in 2020 as well. I mean, look at Morgan Stanley, 100% bagger basically from where you started 2020. Quite the returns across the board. We jumped to Bitcoin. Quite the year for Bitcoin. Quite the two years for Bitcoin, but, but man, look at this year compared to any other, right? Bitcoin starts at 30,000, roller coaster ride up to above 60, back to 30, back to almost 70,000. We're trading at 48,000 to end the year for Bitcoin shares. Ethereum, quite the roller coaster year as well. Now, Ethereum only goes back to February here. It doesn't have the full, uh, they were not trading on futures as early as Bitcoin. They look to, uh, I think they began that trading just February of this year, but even on that chart, you had a low print of 1371. We end the year in Ethereum uh, with Ethereum trading at 3805. All right, folks, we got the S&Ps within 24 points of all-time highs. Do we see 4800 today? Do we see another record as we come into the end of 2021? Full trading day today as the final trading day of 2021. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, S&P's up three points right now as we're 12 minutes into the trading day. I got a chart of Peloton up here, some volatility to kick off the final trading day of the year for Peloton. Quite a volatile year for them overall. We're down 1.6%. They get a downgrade. They cannot escape 2021 fast enough. Peloton, uh, JP Morgan, JPM, no, excuse me, JMP, not JPM, JMP Securities, downgraded the stock to market perform from market outperform, declining website visits and page views. Uh, boy, we could all learn a lot just from the market behavior over the last year or two, talking about what is possible. Um, if a lot of people said, what's the possible pullback you could get, right? Um, like, let's just look over the S&P, okay? If a lot of people in February of this year, of last year, said, what's 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 your max pain situation here on the outbreak? And not a lot of people would have said 2174 in the market. At the bottom, if you'd say, how quickly can we get back the losses that we just had from 3374? Not a lot of people would have said, you'll be positive by August of this year. If you said at the beginning of the year, what are the odds that the market trades up over 25% with how resilient it's been to recoup a positive year in 2020. I think the street high estimate, and the street was pretty bullish coming into this year, folks, when we started the year off at 3,600 or 3,700. I think the street high estimate was like 43 or 4,400. We're closing out the year at 4,800 on the S&P. Uh, all things possible. Now, when you get down to, into individual equities, man, oh man, uh, there's been some huge ones that come to mind in terms of accelerations, getting ahead of itself, seeing a pullback. Zoom comes to mind. Great company, Zoom. I have some Zoom shares for retirement. Thankfully, just a couple. Um, because I am in at a price that it is trading above for Zoom. Uh, 189. I mean, you gave it all back from the breakout area in August. Bounced around for a bit at 300. And just like that, you've been ticking around under 200 now. Zoom, in March of last year, was at 164. Okay, you just traded down to a low of 174 within $10 of giving it all back after being at 588. Peloton shares, they actually did give it all back. You go back to 2019, you were trading at 3702. You were in a losing position. If you were a buyer of Peloton in December of 2019, that does not seem fair in terms of the platter that they were rewarded of being an at-home exercise equipment maker during COVID. 
Uh, they became a sensation, traded to 171. Just remarkable that you actually give it all back. Yes, I thought they were getting a little bit ahead of itself at 171. No, I did not think that they would give it all back. Now, when they went IPO, I remember talking about with my dad that I did not see the business plan working out at the valuation they had only because I'm somebody that likes exercising. I like athletics. I love biking. I have a bike that I take outside. I'm fortunate to live in Florida where you can bike outside. But the general idea of paying $1,800 for the privilege to pay 45 or 50 bucks a month to use their app seemed appalling to put it lightly. Um, and it seems like some of the fascination is waning with that equity. I mean, you look at the market cap of this company, okay? We're still talking about a pretty sizable company at a valuation of $12 billion. Uh, but man, where were we? We were what? Four to five times that. So you're pushing 50 or $60 billion market cap. And just like that, you almost get wiped out on Peloton. You do get wiped out all the way back to the start of that. Another company that comes to mind, DocuSign. Quite the give back, quite the year. Uh, DocuSign trades to 154. Now, quite a different story, though, right? DocuSign still sitting 100% above where you came into the pandemic, okay? Zoom shares still sitting uh, more than 100% above where you came into the pandemic. That's what makes Peloton so remarkable. Uh, they should not be back to where they were prior to the pandemic. When you think about the rash acceleration that they got, where would this stock be without the pandemic then? If they're trading at the same price they've been at for two years during COVID, when they just sold out every bike they had, they were backlogged forever, they couldn't sell, um, keep up enough bikes to, to service what they're selling, right? If during all of that, this company's worth the same thing it was worth two years ago in December of 2019, then what would it have been worth if they just had a normal growth tra trajectory without all of that acceleration during COVID. I mean, this became a worldwide phenomenon, definitely became a countrywide phenomenon in the US and you're back to those levels. I'd be very, very wary of that company when you give it all back. You still got $12 billion of equity there. Uh, and I don't know how that plays out as they got some problems if you're back there. And they may have more problems than we even know because look at this chart, folks. I mean, you're talking about on a weekly basis, it's just not stopping. You're ending the year with a downgrade down 1.7% uh, for the day to end a year. You want to talk about tough yearly returns because you almost kicked this year off at a max uh, profitable high situation of almost 160. You're going to end the year at 36. All right, what else we got going on in terms of companies? Nothing too substantial, as you would imagine, folks. I'm not even going to jump over for those. Let's see what else I had pulled up here in terms of articles. I talked about rates. Uh, how about in China? Yeah, China punishing people trying to flee COVID controls um, in their... Jian, maybe, is where it is. Um, forceful moves still needed to curb the outbreak. Just a reminder of how different life is over in China. Central City's been on lockdown for more than a week over there. I think they got like 10, yeah, 13 million people uh, punishing people. They'll just lock them up in camps over in China, folks, as they do to millions of their own residents already. Uh, forceful moves to be taken to curb the outbreak. Uh, you're the vice premier, said so local authorities need to adopt more targeted and forceful measures. Can you imagine in a democratic society if you had authorities saying targeted and forceful measures, locking down 13 people? Uh, China reported 166 local confirmed cases for the day, 161 of them in the city. To put that in context, folks, uh, Miami-Dade County, unfortunately, Miami, Florida, everywhere has got some pretty substantial outbreaks going on. Miami-Dade alone is pushing like 8,000 cases a day. So it's just remarkable how China locks it down for 100 cases or so, considering what's going on everywhere else. Uh, the situation severe and complex. Uh, yeah, she is the only woman in the ruling Communist Party 25 member. They, they got a, a token woman out there um, over in China. I'm not kidding, folks. It's all, you know, you don't think that's a coincidence over there. Uh, local police have had to track down people attempting to duck the tight controls. I don't blame them. Tough situation living over in China under that type of a dictatorship over there. Uh, and yeah, they're going to be hosting the Olympics. You know, I hope all that comes to light because, you know, it's a bummer. They're human beings over there, and they're living under that. And I'm sure there's a lot of amazing human beings that wish they had a little bit more democracy in China uh, than they do living under that type of a regime. All right, back to the markets. S&P's down by 447.68. Let's see how some of those FANG stocks are finishing out the year. Apple flat right now at 178. All these stocks, quite a remarkable final quarter. I mean, you almost kick it off to the day 
right? The final three months of the year, man, just a, a remarkable overperformance across the board. Whether you look at the NASDAQ 100, you're talking about trading from basically 14,500 to 16,400. You had 1,900 points on this index in the final quarter alone. If you took off the last quarter, and listen, I wouldn't have faulted you. I mean, you came in, okay? Let's just back it up for some context here. You came into the final quarter from about 3,700, and you kicked off October at 4,300, right? You were up like 600 S&P points. Um, which was basically, remember, this was like a street high forecast, I just said, 43 or 4,400. A lot of people might have been misguided there to take some money off the table, let the final quarter of the year play out. Uh, nonetheless, that would have been a mistake as the S&Ps ending the year at 4,700 and change, potentially 4,800. Could we see it? We got a whole day of trading left, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got a pretty calm market out there. Russell catching a little bit of a bit out there, up about seven points. The small caps, 2254. Uh, small caps definitely could be the underperformer of the year with the other way, the way the other market's performing. You look at where we are, though, you're talking about a year where we basically come in at 2000. You're still going to be up more than 10% of the year 
for the Russell in a year of underperformance compared to especially the likes of the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. All right, folks, it's New Year's Eve. Be safe out there. A couple nice reminders out here. Um, pretty cool. Triple A as well offers free tow to go service so drivers can ring in 2022 safely. Folks, wherever you are, you're celebrating, you're celebrating at home, you're celebrating out with your friends, your family. Uh, be safe. Have a few cocktails if you want. Take an Uber, folks. Take a Lyft. AAA, an outstanding program in here. Toe to go service. This is available in Florida. Slow, scrolling down to the states it's in. Uh, does not look like that is available in Massachusetts. Okay, but this service, if you need a ride, 855 to toe to go. Two toe to go, 855. You can Google it, folks. It's a AAA service. All right, and what that includes is from 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, no, actually, wow, this goes all the way through the holidays. That's pretty cool. You call AAA tow to go. Now, this is for AAA members and non members. Pretty cool they do this. A tow truck's going to arrive and it'll transport drivers and their cars to a safe place within a 10 mile radius. I mean, it's an amazing service. Doesn't get much better than that. Pretty cool that they are offering it in Florida. If you're not in one of the states, then I encourage you to check out an Uber or Lyft. They have some deals sometimes on New Year's Eve going on. Uh, nonetheless, it's one night a year, folks. You might need it the most. Pay for some surge pricing, whatever it is, get you home safe. So you wake up tomorrow uh, and it protects you and the people around you on the road. Because one thing on this AAA article, just reading out it, um, as I got down here, one third of all traffic cat crash fatalities in the U.S. involve drunk drivers. That is a sad statistic. Uh, so take control of that. Plan for it, folks. You don't want to have to make that decision in the moment. When you're out having a good time, you have your car. Be ready to make the decision. Don't drink and drive and get ready for a fabulous 2022. All right, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Starting your New Year's uh, Eve off with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up right now. Next, we got Fast Market uh, at 12. We got our man Steve Rhodes at 1 o'clock. And my dad, Tom O'Brien, wraps it up live from 3 till 4 because we got a 